Hello everyone, I'm Monica from Idak. I'm an architect and I help designers create photorealistic visualizations. Today I will show you five essential rules that will help you create professional and eye-catching renders. Let's get started. 1. Start with a clean and well-organized 3D model. A lot of rendering issues actually start with the model itself. Check that all elements in your model are properly grouped, assigned to the correct tags. Also, avoid messy and overly complex geometry. Here's my tip. Whenever you download a model from the internet, always open it in the separate file first. That way you can clean it up, fix any geometry issues, group everything properly, and make the model lighter before importing it into the main project. Doing this will save you so much time and frustration, and you will know that everything in your scene is clean and ready to render. 2. Scene Composition A good camera angle can make your interior visualization look amazing, but a bad one can ruin a whole image. Picking a nice view is great, but don't forget to check your camera settings too. Set the field of view between 40 and 60 degrees, I usually use something around 50. And always turn on two-point perspective, it keeps all the vertical lines straight and makes your scene look more clean and professional. 3. Lighting, the key to realistic renders. There are a few simple rules worth following to get great results. Let's start with natural light. My favorite way to set it up is by using HDRI maps. They give you full control over the lighting and the background environment. There are thousands of free HDRIs available online. I recommend checking out Polyhaven and Ambient CG. I usually go for white or bluish HDRIs when I want a clean, natural daylight look. Mixing natural and artificial light can look amazing, if you do it right. For artificial light, I mostly use IES or spotlights for realistic light spots and rectangle light for LED strips. I always choose a warm tone, around 3000 to 4000 Kelvin. When you combine this with cool natural light, you will get a beautiful and balanced effect. Create a good balance between light and shadow. Dark and bright areas together help your scene feel more 3D. And never light a whole scene or a person directly from the front. It's always better to light your subject from the side or at an angle to bring out depth and contrast. Are you happy with this video? Then make sure to download my free ebook. Inside you will find all the key rules and examples to help you create better and more professional looking renders. You can find a link in the video description below and also in the top right corner of the screen. 4. High quality materials. Try to avoid using materials that only have a base color or a simple texture without any reflections or BAM maps. To make your materials look photorealistic, you need to add a few extra maps that give the surface depth and detail. Here are the most important ones diffuse or albedo. This is the base color of your material. Ambient occlusion. Add soft shadows. I usually blend it with the diffuse map. Specular, glossiness or roughness. This controls how shiny or matte the surface looks. Normal or BAM maps. Add surface details without changing the actual geometry. Displacement. It changes the geometry and adds real depth. Perfect for things like bricks or stone. When I need custom materials, I usually download high quality PBR materials from the internet. For example, from AmbientCG or Textures.com. Also, don't forget about the resolution of the textures you use for your materials. I usually go with 2K resolution, which means around 2000 by 2000 pixels. You can always choose higher resolution, like 4K or even 8K if you need more detail. But be careful. 8K textures can be really heavy and might slow down the project or your render. Make sure to check out the material libraries in your render engine. They offer ready-to-use, high-quality materials that can save you a lot of time. 5. Details and post-production Nothing fills a space like plants, dishes, blankets and pillows. But when you add these elements, make sure to pay attention to both the materials and the models themselves. Poorly made accessories with flat textures or low quality geometry can ruin the overall look and make the render feel fake. Once your scene is ready, 
it's time for post-production. With modern render engines like V-Ray or D5, you don't need to open Photoshop. Post-production features are already built in and easy to use. Here's what I usually adjust. Exposure to make the scene look brighter or darker, contrast to add depth, white balance to set cooler or warmer tones, saturation to make the colors look stronger. This might seem like small improvements, but they will help take your scene from good to great. And those are the most important roles to help you create photorealistic visualizations. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to download my ebook, the link is in the description of the video. See you soon, bye!